Want to trigger automation on the go with your smartwatch? Today we will look into Home Assistant automations using iOS actions, including counters, music control, and even for game time. Although this specific video will be most relevant to Apple Watch users, I am sure the nuggets of thought will be useful for everyone, and that final automation I've mentioned can be recycled even if you do not have a smartwatch, so keep watching till the end. There are two ways to set up actions in Home Assistant. The right one, and the unnecessarily cumbersome one. You guessed it right. The latter option involves making changes to your config file, which I feel like an unnecessary evil here. The right way to go is to set those up through your iPhone companion app. To do so, on your phone, click the triple line at the top left. Scroll down and click settings. Scroll down and click on companion app. You will then be presented with a list of items from which to choose actions. As you can see, I have a few actions set up already, but for you, it will just show this green add button. Click it and a new action will be added. Click on it. Now it will ask you to fill in the name and server if you have multiple ones. Note that name should not contain any spaces for this to work properly further down the line. You can now customize text, its color, background color, icon, and its color to match whatever aesthetic you are going for on your Apple Watch. This is how it looks on mine. As you can see, I've added dummy actions to break things up in groups on the watch to help with navigation. Now we can jump into automations and leverage these actions we've created to trigger automations. Starting off with a simple Simple play pause. Next track for music. I've used Spotify and Spotcast integrations to run my Echo speakers directly through Home Assistant using some easy buttons for navigating playlists. See the quick code for that card here and check the link in the description to the video specifically on the topic. Back to our automation. For trigger type, we need to choose manual event and input event type as iOS.action underline fired. In the event data, we write the action name as one word and play pause. As always, these will be in the description of this video for you to copy and paste. Note that the name of the action should match exactly the name you've given your action in the companion app. Now repeat the same for the next track and make sure you assign each trigger with a unique ID. In actions, we now simply go for choose. Set a condition to the trigger ID and call service, media player play pause, and select the appropriate entity from the list. Repeat the same for the next track and save. And here is your first action ready to go. As you can see, it works nearly instantly with about a second delay, which is more than I can say about Spotify itself sometimes. The next track works well too. No issue, you will also be getting a small haptic feedback from your watch, which will further reassure you that you've done everything right. Next up is a home and away automation. Here as well, we set two event type trigger actions. One for us coming back home and another one for us leaving. Once again, make sure action names correspond to those you've assigned in the app and that you've assigned unique trigger IDs. In actions, we go for my personal favorite choose and set option one to look for a way action fired ID. I then run a number of call services to turn off sockets and lights around the house. Conversely, for the second option, I am turning all of those sockets back on. In YAML, it can be done as easily as copy pasting the exact string and replacing turn off with turn on. You can, of course do it in the visual editor. It will just take a little longer. Counter automation can also be set to react to iOS actions, a great option for those who do not have physical buttons around the house or those who consume things outside of the house. Just tap on the watch and the counter logs increment. To set this one up, we pick the manual event trigger corresponding to the action name. As you can see, I have five different counting events here and you can add as many as you'd like so long as you assign unique trigger IDs. In actions, we then simply call service counter increment and voila, job done. Finally, a game time action triggers a starter automation that switches on my PS5 smart plug. Don't switch off the video. This is just the beginning. The real automation here is what happens when this plug turns on. Let's look into it together. We set two triggers, one for when the plug state changes to on. This is what our previous action helped us with. The second trigger monitors plug energy consumption and actions if the value drops below 10 watts. Make sure you write appropriate trigger IDs. There are no conditions for my automation, but you may possibly set up some time of day boundaries. In actions, we are starting with choose and option one will require two conditions. One for the trigger ID and another one to check if my phone is connected to the correct Wi-Fi access point in my house. You may not need that second condition, but since I have kids, they may play with the watch and accidentally start the whole automation. In the action section for option one, we first need to give it a delay so that PlayStation switches on properly. I've identified that it takes around eight seconds. Then we call service to switch on our TV, waited for another 10 seconds for TV to come online, and then finally switched the source from Fire Stick to PS5. Presto, you are ready to play. 
The only thing left to be done is to create option two to switch off everything when done. For that, we use a second trigger ID. And in my case, I also use the time condition, although it is probably completely unnecessary. In actions, we give it a bit of a delay again. Switch back to the fire TV. For those of you living with someone, you know why. Wait a few more seconds, turn off the TV and smart plug. And here you have it, running automations from the wrist anywhere, anytime. You can choose to add iOS action for every automation in your environment. Though note that scrolling on the Apple Watch may get laborious. Thank you for watching. See you in the next one.